Hi there, my name is Mike, and today I'll be teaching you about 3.js, a JavaScript library that allows you to use and interact with 3D models. Today we'll be making this little cube demonstration thing. Uh, pretty simple, but it's still super cool, especially for the web. Uh, you couldn't, you definitely couldn't do this like 10, 15 years ago. We've got like a lighting effect going on, and then it'll follow our mouse around. Uh, so to start, you're going to want to go to this website, 3.js.org. You can find it if, if you look up 3.js, it's the first Google entry. Uh, so just go on the left here to download and click download. Uh, when this here downloads, you'll see this this folder. Uh, so if you go into 3.js master and then go into build, you'll find a 3.js, which is the file that you want. So just put that in your project folder. I'll make a quick project folder on my desktop. Uh, we'll call this 3 and we'll paste that in. Uh, and then I'm going to open this up with the VS code. Window real quick. Open up this folder directory. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to make a index.html file. And then I'm going to use the emit abbreviation to make just a quick little body. Uh, so we'll make a script source and we'll import 3.js. And then we'll make a new script under that to start writing our code. Okay, so to start, we're essentially going to create our environment that our 3D object will live in. Uh, so to, we're going to need a scene. And we'll create that uh, by saying new, and then we'll use three, all in capitals is how you access the three library. And then dot scene, that's a method of three. And then we'll do that for a camera as well. We'll say camera equals new three dot, this time it's a perspective camera. And this takes some arguments. The first one is going to be the FOV. Uh, so that's like the width that your camera sees. Uh, we'll set that as 75 degrees for now. The next one is the aspect ratio. So we're going to make this a full screen application like you saw with the demo. So we'll just use window dot inner width. Aspect ratio is width over height uh, over window dot inner height. And then this takes the minimum distance from an object to see it and the maximum distance from an object to see it. Uh, so that is 0 0.01, we'll say, uh, just super close up to the camera, and then uh, 1,000 for the distance. And then we need to create our render. So this is bar render equals new three dot, and this is WebGL render. Three has a few renderers. Uh, some of them are more supported on older browsers, but WebGL has the most features, I believe, so it's the best one to use. Uh, and this one doesn't take any arguments, but you need to set the uh, width and height of the renderer. Uh, so we'll do render.setSize. And then for the width, we'll use that same window.innerWidth, since we want it to be full screen. And then we'll use window.innerHeight. And then lastly, for this bit, we need to actually append this to our document. Uh, so right now we've got all these ideas in JavaScript land, but these aren't in, uh, these aren't tied together with HTML. Uh, so to append it, we'll do document dot uh, body. We're going to append to the body. We're going to append child, and then the object is actually going to be acquired from the renderer. So we're going to say renderer dot dom element. Okay, so we're almost ready to make our cube, but right now none of this is being updated. This is only happening once, and then it appends to the body, and then nothing ever happens. Uh, so to start animating it, we're going to make a animation function. So we'll say function animate. And then we'll say request animation frame. And then we'll run this same function. So this will make it loop. And then at the end, we'll say animate. Oh, and then in the animation function, we'll use the renderer.render function. So this will actually render the uh, objects. And then we'll pass in the scene and the camera. So we're rendering the scene from the camera's perspective. That's how these arguments are ordered. Okay, so we're just about ready to make our cube. If we were to open up this file in the web browser, you can see it's just a black square. Uh, now there's one issue here, and that is the default CSS margin that is included uh, with good old CSS defaults in browsers. Uh, and you can see that there's scroll bars, so this isn't being displayed as a block form. So we're going to do that. We're going to say up in this, the header, we'll make a quick style tag. And for the body, we're going to get rid of the margin. 
which is a margin zero. And then uh, this is a canvas element. Oops. This is a canvas element, this black square that uh, the renderer makes. So we'll just say canvas with the display block. Just because we want that full screen effect. Okay, so there we go, full screen effect, no more scroll bars, looking good. Uh, so now we're ready to make the cube. So to do that, when creating an object with 3.js, you first need to define the geometry. So that's all the vertices and edges of the actual cube. Uh, so 3.js has a cube defined. So we're going to use var geometry uh, equals new 3.box geometry. And that's a method. And now we're going to make the material since we've defined the edges and vertices. Uh, this will be material equals new three dot. Uh, for the material, we're going to use mesh Lambert material. This material gives us the different sort of shading effects that we want. Uh, some other materials, they apply lighting automatically, uh, which isn't really the vibe we want. We want that sort of top-down lighting with uh, different shades so that you can see the different sides of the cube clearly. So mesh Lambert material. And then that takes a dictionary object. Uh, so we needed to just define the color. Uh, and that is, we'll use hexadecimal for this. Uh, we'll just use white, so that's six Fs. Okay. And now we need to define the cube as the mix of the two. So that's equals new three dot mesh. So the mesh takes the geometry and the material and mix them, mixes them together. Okay. And then we'll add a light as well, because uh, right now the cube is just in the dark void. Uh, so we'll say light equals new, and we'll do a three dot hemisphere light, which I picked specifically because it's more of a realistic effect. You can see in the description, I linked below the documentation where there's all kinds of different lights and it explains pretty well how to use each light. Uh, but we'll use a hemisphere light for the purpose of this video. And that takes three arguments. The first is the first color. Uh, so that's what the source color is, which will be white for our case. And then the second is the bottom color. So essentially at the ground, uh, what color is it? So we'll just make it black at the bottom. Uh, that'll be fine. Zero, 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 zero. And then the last argument is the intensity of the light. We'll just go one for full intensity. And then we're all done defining things. We just need to apply them to our scene. So we'll do scene.add, and then we can add our cube and we can add our light. And now if we were to check our website on the browser, you'll see that we still don't see anything. And the issue here is that we're actually still inside the cube. When we made the cube, it we didn't give it a position to put the cube at. And when we made our camera, we didn't give our camera a position to put at. Uh, so we're both at zero, zero. Uh, which is causing this issue where we just see darkness and that's because we're inside the cube. To fix this, we can just move our camera out. So all we do is camera.position and we'll do the Z axis and we'll set that equal to five. So now if we check, you can see that we see the edge of a cube. Uh, now we can't see the corner, so you can't see the th sort of 3D effect, uh, you just see a square. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to rotate the cube. Uh, since we want this sort of, if I pull up the other one, if we rotate it with the mouse like this, that's what we're going for. So to do this, we'll just save a couple of variables. We'll say mouse x equals zero uh, and mouse y equals zero. And then we'll make a quick function uh, and we'll call this uh, save mouse. And that will just, oh, and that'll take an event. Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is run this function on the event that the mouse moves. Uh, so we'll say event or mouse x equals event dot client x. Let's see if I can spell client. There we go. Client x, and then we'll duplicate that and do the same for y. Then we'll do document dot on mouse move. And we'll save that as save mouse. Okay, uh, now all we need to do is when we animate it, uh, we need to use those mouse coordinates as the rotation of the object. So to do that, all we do is we access that cube object, and then we set its rotation, uh, and then we'll do x and y equal to uh, mouse x for x, copy paste, and mouse y for y. So let's see that. 
Okay, so uh, first of all, this is very fast. Uh, so to slow this down, we can just uh, set mouse X and we'll divide by 500. Let's see if that feels good. Okay, that is working, but it does feel a little funky if you see I'm moving side to side and it's going up and down. Uh, so I guess these rotations, the X plane must be a different plane than the Y plane uh, from what I imagined. I imagined X was this way, but I guess not. Uh, so we can just fix this by uh, flipping these X and Ys. Okay, let's check that out. All right, there we go. Uh, so we're all done and we've got our cube with mouse movement. Uh, and you can see this cube in 3D space. So if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe slash comment. Uh, and thank you for watching. Uh, perhaps I'll do a video in the future where I import an object instead of just using the cube that comes with 3.js. Uh, if you'd like to see that, uh, go ahead and like this video. I'll probably just do it tomorrow anyway. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and have a great day.